So this is a part like, you guys know I've got this new program, Client Attraction. Client Attraction is everything. It's like really what people perceive your business to be. It's not about money, it's not about price points, it's about the value that people see in your business. And you have to, and we're gonna get more into it in module six, which is at the end. We're gonna talk about marketing, but that's what it's all about. So, um, okay, so the reason I keep these small and intimate is because I wanna give you guys the most value possible. If it is uh, 20 people in here, I am unable to do that. And I feel like I'm doing a disservice to you guys as well as doing a disservice to my business. Sound good? Sound good? <laughs> so questions. Throughout today, you guys will have questions. Y'all will. So the reason I gave you guys some pads because I would like for you guys to write them down because we do do a Q&A. We do two Q&As. So if something pops in your head, I'm quite sure. I'm very thorough in this class. I'm quite sure I will cover it. I probably just didn't get to it yet. But it, write it down because any question you have, I definitely want you guys to go away with feeling like y'all know it. Y'all great go out there and kill it, right? Y'all great go kill it. So write your questions down. Lunch break is approximately one hour. We break exactly at 12. We begin exactly at one. Now, when you are doing a three-piece, when you have a three-piece backdrop, you always want to raise your top bar first, right? Say if you, this is a three piece, so say if I raise it from right here first, and then I get it up there, and I'm like, oh, I, and, but I maxed out at this point, and you'll see the thing say, don't raise beyond this point, but say I maxed out, and I'm like, well, I need two more feet. How you gonna get it? Your other, your other adjustable piece is already up there. So you always wanna raise from your top, even if you don't need a lot, just you get in the habit of raising that. I can't tell you how many times I've raised it, like, oh my God, I, you know, you gotta take the whole thing down. So you raise that. Don't go too high. Then raise your other piece. And when you're going like all the way to the ceiling, don't literally go all the way to the ceiling. Because in order for you to get your backdrop back down, you have to go up a little bit to release it. So if you go all the way to the ceiling, I did that too before. But yeah, so you just go close enough where you still have some current. And you use sight lines wherever you can find them. So you guys tell me, right? I'm here by myself. Let's just say I'm here by myself. I can't tell us if, if that's even. What is one easy way that you guys would determine if it's even? Using everything you see. You're using that top pole against what though? This pole right here? Okay, but, but I like that. So yeah, that's what you do. You wanna use objects around your design because your eyes can fool you, they will fool, especially if you're close up on it. So normally, if I, if I was doing something like this, I would, you see how this ceiling has tracks? I would go all the way to the, to the backdrop and make sure it's even along that track. Because if it wasn't, meaning it probably would be pushed back a little, see that? I'm like, well that ain't even. And then, I would look at the measurement going across. So you definitely want to use your objects that's around you. I mean, it's, let's just say it's the backdrop with something like this, right? What's something you guys would use to just easily give you sight lines? My girls, yes! Use the bricks. And that is what people kind of don't understand about negative and positive space. You want to use everything in your realm to make sure that your backdrop is even. The, the, I, know, I, I look at evenness before I even look at technique. I look at evenness before I even look at pleats and all that stuff. Because if you don't, uh, if how you start is how you finish, right? So, why your hand all the way over there? There you go. 
you got it. You just want to look at your pole because this is where you want the fabric to come up. If you go all the way back here, it's not going to be even. So look at your pole, and that's exactly where you place your hand, and you, yep, bring it right on up. Yep, there we go. I love, I love. You don't want it over, yeah. Now look at this. So you have to just make sure it's... There you go. And then this little thing, take that, yeah. Make sure that's under. All right, take that. Oh, wait a minute, who on the frame? Hold on. The ornaments. Or this, this is like a ball garland, right? This is an embellishment to, you know, add more value to your backdrop. So you're going to take your safety pin and you want to attach it to the C hook that I told you to attach in the beginning. Put it in your center. Make sure. Then the C why it's important for you to find your middle. So you always want to find your middle. That way, it's easy to know. It's easy to locate where you where you should be working. You got it. Just yep. Yeah. Just look at this. Just like that. So now the bowl, when you go, when you lift and you drape, you're gonna open up your swag and you'll have a ball or a garland on each side. So now you know. <laughs> so now you go ahead and lift to your desired height. Okay. And when you when you're using these uprights, if you see the ones I primarily use, I love the stainless steel because this has a coating. So this, it'll get jammed, just like it is now. So when you're buying your equipment, your products, definitely use just the stainless steel. Don't get black. I would, rec I would not recommend you get black because this is what you'll deal with. It gets jammed every time because it's coated. Those go up and down so easy, and I, I never go through jamming. And this happens quite often in, in class because it's coated. So even, I don't care if you see them on clearance, don't get them. <laughs> it's not worth the headache. Because ultimately, I probably would have to take this all the way down. And this was when, remember, do y'all remember when they was on clearance? Perfect. No, because it's all. Oh. Oh, he was saying the camera. I like him. So yeah, so when you're getting your products, you definitely always want to use stainless steel so you don't run into the headache of getting your products jammed. And then now we're more than likely going to have to take this unit down to replace the upright because it's jammed. Bummer! So your first panel, the idea of this design, right, is your first panel, which is the, the front portion, going to come one way. Your back panel is going to go another way. So it's going to kind of give you like a, you know, a little zzz thing going on. All right, so again, I'm measuring. Now, since I'm only using two, I'm going to use these because I'd rather they be low. They give you a more elegant kind of look. Just go with the hand techniques, forming your pleats. If you are doing a design such as this, you don't necessarily, well, it's, a, it's really a personal choice, but you hardly would want a clean, straight cut, right? You would want a more deep, uh, yeah, a little more deep swoop. So in order for you to achieve that, you gotta start manipulating the fabric. Do y'all see that? And all you're doing is all right here. If your pleats are already correct in your hand, nothing you can do is gonna mess up your design. You have to do all of the manipulation from right here. I'm still at my marker, right? So then I go and I just secure it to the pole. What's that? Moving it. Just kind of 
just raising your fabric up like that. And even if you still like, you know, not comfortable with it, you still could go ahead and secure. The key is to not lose your pleats. Like just secure it to your pole, right? But don't do it too tight. So give it a little loose secure, right? Just cause you want it to be there. Now you still can play with it. You see that? And if you want to make it tighter, you just pull down here. That's how you adjust your pleats. Keep that right there. Do the same thing on the other side. Measuring right here. Hand over hand method. Make sure this piece is in. Get my next piece, continue. I'm just going to secure this to the pole so I can just see what adjustments I need to make to make sure my swoops are even. So the first thing I'm going to look for would be what? Make sure I can already see that it's not. So I want to bring this, make it a little more deep to make it even with that. And I could easily do that just by bringing it out. Can you see that? I can. Okay just play with them. So if you want something, if you want to adjust and make it deep, you go up here. If you want to make it tight, you pull down here. If you want to make like a, a deeper swoop, like more romantic feel, you pull from the top, meaning you pull from the top. And if you want to make it more clean cut like this, you want to pull down here. You pull from the bottom. Y'all got that? Yeah, this is crush here. Now when you get into, now we already did the, did the bling wraps, right? So now I would cover, I would go ahead and polish up my, my base. Give it a nice little dress. Same thing with my pole cover. Basic, right? But this is basic. Always. Nobody should know what, what your hardware look like. They shouldn't know what color it is. They shouldn't know anything about it. Okay, so now this part is where you can kind of play. Some people do it this way and slide them on. When you're practicing good posture, and I got horrible posture, but when you're practicing good posture, you always stand exactly firm, straight up, wherever you're gonna drape, and you wrestle it in your neck, and you just let it sit there. And then you just start to drape. Look for your tag. This is crush sheer. Mm -hmm. You hardly will ever, you'll see the different textures that we're going to be using today. You will, like this, you will hardly ever see me drape with that. Um, for one, it looks like what everybody uses. It's cheap, you know, and it's just, it doesn't give you any, wow, you know. So I would highly suggest you guys spend a couple more dollars and some premium fabric. For one, look at how I'm treating this fabric. I ain't folding it, I don't wash it. It's just, it's, it's really maintenance free. So for me, that makes it really worth it. You know, not having to wash it, not having to do anything. And then it gives you a backdrop texture. And like I was saying with this, I think when I purchased the roll, it was maybe $3.99 a yard, something like that. Now 
Now, I could have been lazy and just pinned it. But I told you, how you start is how you finish. So even though it probably look all right right now, soon you're going to raise that bad boy, I'm like, oh my God. Boy, I learned that the hard way a couple times. So what you want to do, I like these because it already have the hole in it, right? If you use a broom, you know, got the little thing, use that. Use whatever you can get your hands on. So you just want to stick this in. Give it a little twist. Not too tight because it's, it's, you're going to have to untwist it. Some people use, what is it? Zip tie, right. I, I hardly ever use zip ties. For one, they, they're not reusable. Once you use it, what you gotta do with it in order to get it off? You gotta cut it. You know how I had these, uh, some of these things since I graduated? You could use them over and over again. So you wanna use for a pole cover, please do not try and cut panels and use a little piece to cover up a pole. The purpose of doing premium draping is so it looks premium. Meaning you will have to use an entire 10 foot drape on just one little old pole cover. And if it's not, say if it's not sheer, say if it's sequin, you have to use an entire drape just for your pole, right? So you wanna just slide it all on. Then you wanna untie that. And this is your pole cover. And when you tie this, right, you don't want it to be loose. You should be only able to get one finger through. If you can get more than a finger through, it's too big. Meaning when you go to put it on your pole, Nine times out of ten, you're going to see your pole. So you're only supposed to be able to get one finger through there. Have your little poof, poof. And all you're going to do, it sits right on the pole like a mushroom or a cat, right? Just like that. That's your pole cover. That's going to be like so crucial. Some of you guys, as we design, won't need pole covers, but for basic, like basic draping, that's your pole cover. And a good thing, another good thing, like I said, another good thing about this fabric, I, I keep my pole covers already done. Normally, I'll keep at least five, six pole covers because I'm always use them, right? And I have a lot of fabric, so I don't have to create pole covers all the time. If it's, if it's a backdrop and I take it off and it's two pole covers, I, I put them right in the bag. They still are ready for my next time, right? So. Now this is basic, and this is your, your first layer. Like, just make sure it's polished. Make sure if you want to pin it here, you can temporarily. But the, the thing with this, ladies, I want to tell you guys as well, when you, the difference with, you see the kind of sequin that Deb has, that's, that's considered mesh sequin. You see how it's more, it moves a little more, is a lot softer. This sequin, although the, this is really good sequin, it's from CV Linens, but it's, it's more, it's not as durable. It's on taffeta, meaning it's harder to manipulate. So if you guys are going to invest in some sequin and you want it to drape that way, don't get this. The only time you would get this sequin is if you want it to be a panel and you don't want it to, you don't want to see through. Like if you use that as a panel, it's going, you're going to see straight through it because it's mesh. If you use this as a panel, you won't because it's opaque. Y'all got it? Okay. Yeah, it don't have to be perfect because the excess gonna go to the back. So once you just kind of put it up there, get yourself a safety pin. Pin it in there and just hook it there. And the only goal right now is to just secure your drape up until you get this secured on the other side. Yeah? Now you go, okay. So when you have, some of you guys, if you see your bases, when you are draping to this magnitude and you're using this many panels, it is imperative that you go up a step above and you get an 18 by 18, at least. If you use the smaller units like you see on some of the backdrops, it's imperative that you use a weight. Otherwise, it will tip, it will tumble, or it's gonna be a disaster. 
So it's imperative, if you're using this many drapes and at this, at this weight, you have to use a heavy duty base, which is 18 pounds, 18 by 18. Got it? So I know some of these kits come with the smaller 16 by 14, that's only 10 pounds. You figure 10 pounds is what, two bags of sugar. This is way more than two bags of sugar, okay? So always think safety to eliminate disaster. <laughs> All right.